What five animatronics would I smash? <laughs> what is with these questions? Arcade Endo said thoughts on Roxanne Wolf. I'm gonna get cancelled. What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another video. Today I am doing something trendy for once. <laughs> Basically, uh, across Twitter especially, uh, but also across Discord and stuff, I have seen this picture being be going around. It says, ask me any Five Nights at Freddy's opinion and I have to answer 100% honestly. Today I am going to be 100% honest. That's basically me saying that I'm not 100% honest anyway. You guys have asked me questions in the comments and I have got a lot of questions, so let's get straight to it. The most popular question is by Classy Baryonics. Do you like the idea that the FNAF community is relying more and more on books instead of the video games to tell a satisfying story? I think it's something fresh. It's, it's something refreshing, right? And I like, I think other series kind of tried it, like Hello Neighbor, I think they had a book series, I think Bendy had a book series, but FNAF, I feel, did it right. I guess I can say that because I've only read the FNAF books, but like, I really feel like FNAF got it correct. Like, the original novel trilogy, a lot of people love those books, but they were one long continuation continuity. And I feel like the short story horror works a lot better, Goosebumps vibes. And I actually really like the idea that the FNAF community is going through these books because it gives us more content. Obviously, games are going to come out every few years or so now. It's going to be like Nintendo games, I guess, like a Mario game comes out every few years. So I do, I don't like that games are going to come out like every other year or something. But I do like the idea that we're filling the gaps, quite literally, in lore and in the time uh, gaps with these books. Um, I really like them and I'm so excited for Tales from the Pizza Plex. What discarded theories would you have liked to be true? Um, that's a really tough question. I feel like the crying child or the bite victim, I feel like he needs some more kind of uh, uh, more of a play in the story at the moment. Sure, people believe him to be Golden Freddy, but I actually really liked the theory back in the day that Crying Child was quite literally put back together. Yeah, that could be, that could still be true, but I feel like generally it's kind of discarded because the Crying Child possesses Golden Freddy. But I liked the idea back in the day that the Crying Child was put back together quite literally and then I don't know. I think people thought that Mike was uh, the, the bite victim at that point. So, you know, that was kind of a cool theory back in the day. But, um, yeah, I don't really know what else. I don't really know what other theories have been discarded that I would like to be true. I, I'm, I'm quite, I'm kind of satisfied with the story at the moment, but it's not 100% solved. So I don't know if I can say that or not. How would you have liked the final battle of Security Breach? Um, a bit longer. Um, definitely multiple parts to it and kind of more explanation as to what's going on because <laughs> it, it all seems kind of like mm. um, I also wish in Security Breach it told you when a boss battle was happening I, I wish it was like I guess Smash where it, it was like well nah actually not like Smash that's actually BS I wish it was like title like Monty and then Monty comes down <laughs> and then pew 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 and then you kill Monty um that was wow okay inky ink oh no this is gonna be like a really tough question I bet the fire ending is expanded upon in ruin and Vanny and Vanessa become two separate characters how do you react oh god um well I react like that I react like that um honestly okay we, this episode hasn't been released yet, but we recorded a episode of the Dark Rooms podcast on Saturday, and that's going up next week. And in that, I said, Vanny, Vanessa, they are the same people. I don't know why people think that they are different. They are clearly the same goddamn people. Uh, so this is why Inky is asking this question. Uh, they, if, if they are revealed to be separate, 
I would be extremely unhappy because that means that there are a lot of red herrings, there are a lot of plot holes, I think, possibly. Like, why... It, that, that wouldn't make sense. So, I would just be shocked and I would be goddamn angry. Uh, I am, I'm actually getting angry thinking about it. What is your biggest concern about the franchise as a whole moving forward? That's a good question, stock photo guy. I love your photo. My biggest concern moving forward is actually probably the theorist community. Um, because I feel like a lot of people are very toxic about the fact that it's only books these days and not a lot of games like in the past. And I feel like a lot of people aren't going to read the books. And so they're not going to be caught up on lore. And especially if it like gets announced or something or completely 100% proven that the books kind of take place in the game timeline, people are going to get annoyed at that. They're going to leave and the theorist community is going to shrink and it's going to get even more. There's going to be more fights. That, I'm not excited for that if that happens. Um, we are getting a lot of books to be fair. So I can see why people would do that, but Hey, start reading. Okay, we have a question from Ha. Thoughts if the FNAF film will pull a Sonic and continue to break the video game movie curse? Or will it fall victim, not just story-wise, but setting, casting, and all of that must be accounted for? And have a pleasant day, thank you. Um, yeah, I think it will fall victim to it. I don't have too much hope for the FNAF movie. I say it again and again and again. I actually really do think that the format of a movie or a series, like a Netflix series or something, is just like Fast for Frights. I feel like it should be like that. I feel like that is what FNAF is built for. Small little stories rather than one whole plot arc where you try and include so many animatronics and so many characters who do different things. And I don't think it will work in movie form, but Blumhouse Productions, Pr prove me wrong. Okay, so our next question is, how do you feel about Scott being kind of quiet and not connected with the community as he used to be? I mean, he promised that someone new would take over the franchise and he hasn't said who. And also Security Breach being the game that divided the fandom and he hasn't said anything about it. Like, I love Scott, but it just feels like he doesn't care. He does care, but he isn't handling very well. How do you feel about this? I agree with your points. I totally agree. I feel like Scott does need to be more verbal. I understand that he's retired, he's probably sitting on a beach with a lemonade, but really, I don't think that he's made some the right decisions recently. Uh, I really do think he should be more verbal about things, more vocal, sorry, verbal. Um, he did say in Dorco's stream recently that there are big things to come this year. I'm not too sure about that. I feel like he needs to elaborate. I feel like he needs to... Even if he just comes one day and does one update and then goes away for a year, that's completely fine. But we want updates, right? We want maybe annual updates. That would be very cool. I think I think I would like that a lot. Um, also, in terms of like the new face of FNAF, I do think it's going to be handed down to Steel Wool. But I really hope that they take all of their criticism that they got from Security Breach and uh, you know, make a make a nice DLC, maybe an, an, another game after that. You know, keep it small, um, keep it working well, and it'll be it'll be great. Okay, sister locations, time step. That's an interesting one. Uh, I like how you go whispers. It's after FNAF one. Uh, yeah, d too true. It is after FNAF one. Um. I would say it's a lot later after FNAF 1 rather than earlier after FNAF 1. I say that because of the sister location ending speech with Michael in the Fazbear Fro Fazbear's Fright, not Fazbear Frights. Um, and also, like, if you think about Room for One More, right? Room for One More, which takes place in Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals, that has Snack Space, and Snack Space it exists in like the the 21st century rather than the 20th century uh, because we know that it's in Into the Pit. We know that Snack Space is in Security Breach. So like Snack Space is definitely like a small business in the 21st century rather than the 20th century. I'm going to assume Security, uh, sorry, this location is like right before FNAF 3. Could be wrong though. Okay, what five animatronics would you smash? 
Oh, Indominus X. Why have you asked me this? What five animatronics would I smash? <laughs> this is such a hard question because I have to be 100% honest. Like, I don't even know in my head if I am being 100% honest. Okay, so... This is... I'm gonna get cancelled. Alright, well, we've already... Like, there is no tension here. This is not awkward at all because we've already done a FNAF Smash or Pass video and I'm hoping to do one in the future as well. So this isn't awkward, okay? The thing is about that video is that was a joke and none of the things I said in that were necessarily true. Um, I also want to pre-warn you that I am hetero-romantic. Uh, <laughs> therefore, uh, I prefer female characters. And if I had the choice, I wouldn't smash anyone because I am asexual. Um, happy Pride Month. <laughs> Roxanne Wolf is uh, is number one smashable. <laughs> I feel like I'm going red. Am I going red? I'm not going red yet. Um, maybe when we get to Toy Chica. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so... Who did I say? Oh, Roxanne Wolf is, is one. Uh, I'm not too into Chica at all, actually. Um, although high school Toy Chica... You know, I'm gonna say high school Toy Chica. Does that count? I guess that counts as Toy Chica. I prefer... I don't like... I don't really like the design of regular Toy Chica, but High School Toy Chica... Okay, so Roxanne... Uh, High School Toy Chica... Uh, I would actually say the puppet. By the way, these are not possessed by children. Before we carry on, these are not possessed by children. These are just the robots. I am talking about the robots. Um, the puppet, I feel like, would be good and so would Night Marion even though Night Marion is terrifying um I need one more one more honestly Glamrock Freddy <laughs> maybe I don't know if that's me being completely honest I don't know if I would but Glamrock Freddy has a very nice design so yeah there's there's your list that you so wanted okay to <sighs> one more minute oh five said Toy Chica Smash or pass? For God's sake! Uh, <laughs> regular Toy Chica pass. High school Toy Chica. Sure, let's go for it. Um, uh, what is with these questions? Arcade Endo said thoughts on Roxanne Wolf. Oh my God! Smash. Yeah, smash. Do you think Eleanor is a bad an antagonist? Because I do. Swamp Eater says that. Um, bad antagonist. I'm not sure. I, th I thought that the Afton amalgamation was a good potential for a antagonist, but didn't pull through because it didn't appear in the games like we thought it would, and in the Fazbear Frights it kind of just died really quickly. Uh, but the whole point of that was to set up Eleanor, and I think Eleanor had, as well, amazing potential. I think it's really cool that she was like behind a lot of the things in Fazbear Frights and I like how we found that out nearer to the end and then we could kind of work out how everything connects and stuff but in terms of villain like antagonist I'm not I, I'm not sure she used her full potential uh, I did really I, th I thought that Eleanor was quite original uh, in the concept of like the ball pit and you know Larson going through all these memories and she's getting weaker because of the the individual balls that he was going through that sounded mad I don't know I think I think she I think she was okay but not the best antagonist ever okay and the last one I do want to address is Dancing Parrot 85 FNAF 4 gameplay is Mike punishment for killing crying child from Afton okay that's an interesting theory I don't think it's from Afton. I actually, well, it could be. I I actually haven't considered that Afton is behind FNAF 4. I think it could literally be Crying Child uh, torturing Michael. Uh, just like how Cassidy uh, tortured, or th at this point, the Vengeful Spirit. The Vengeful Spirit tortured Afton in Ultimate Custom Night. I feel like FNAF 4 is just Michael's version of Ultimate Custom Night, which has been orchestrated by the Crying Child. Um, 
But we do know that the observation rooms are a thing, so I don't really know why the crying child would take the nightmare animatronic specifically unless he was tortured by the nightmare animatronics. Do you know what I mean? So there's kind of a little bit of a weird thing there, but I do mostly agree with you that Mike, that FNAF 4 is Mike's punishment for killing crying child. Um, and we're gonna leave it there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Ask me more questions in the comments below. Uh, I will be 100% honest. I swear, please never ask me who I want to smash again. Uh, and yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe. See you later. Goodbye.